Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on battery metals exploration today. We will hear from Nicole Brewster, our president and CEO of Renforth Resources. During today's webinar, she will provide an overview and outlook, then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time. We will get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first we need to discuss some fine print. During this Renforth Resources webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the Renforth corporate presentation. And that can be found on the company's website, renforthresources.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. Please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on Renforth. So we have Renforth presenting today. The company has exploration projects in the Val d'Or mining camp of Quebec. This includes the Parbec property, which contains a gold deposit on trend with major operating mines. The company's focus is now shifting to its Suramau property, which hosts several prospects with nickel, zinc, copper, and lithium. Uh, with that, I now turn it over to Nicole to update our audience on the company. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And it uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Renforth. I'm going to apologize in advance. I've already dropped off here once due to a storm that's just started. But if I do, I'll be right back. In any case, in order to tell you about Renforth, which is publicly traded on the CSE, the symbol is RFR, Roger Frank Roger, and it also trades on the OTCQB as RFHRF. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see my presentation and I will make it as big as I can and we're going to go through a little bit about Remforth. Um, so Remforth is located in Quebec as Tim told you we are in the the area of Malartic between Val d'Or and Rouen, Quebec. We have, as you can see on the screen, our large scale Suramo property, 330 square kilometers, hosts several occurrences of critical battery metals. And our Parbeck gold deposit right beside it on the Cadillac break on strike with several operating mines. Um, I do want to draw your attention to this map. I don't know if you can see my little hand flying around, but if you can, we have Hydro Station 2 and 7. These are generating hydroelectric power. They have power lines across the Suramo property and are actually responsible for the original discovery of mineralization at Suramo, in fact. Um, this would provide us at some point in the future with the greenest and the cheapest power in Canada. So you are duly cautioned. Uh, you always have to do your own due diligence um, about anything, in fact, but definitely with regard to mining. So here we are. We are in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt in the province of Quebec, which does straddle Ontario, but we're definitely in Quebec. In red is our Suramo property and our Parbeck gold deposit. You can see we're sitting right next door to the Canadian Malartic mine. It, uh, it's contiguous to both Suramo and to Parbeck. Our other neighbor, is, our main neighbor is Agnico, who also holds 50% of the Canadian Malartic mine. There are other operating mines. Yamana has the Camflow Mill. Um, and to the east, there are uh, several other mines in operation. We do have some neighbors that staked around our southern border uh, with regard to lithium. And I will explain the lithium story to you as we move through my presentation. I cannot actually see the uh oh okay i can see the chat window now but i made my screen smaller that doesn't work so i can't see the chat window i'll take a look at questions and tim will help with that at the end here is the cadillac break in red this is a large scale it's a gold structure and we do have a gold deposit 
we're in the midst of pivoting Renforth into the battery metal space, but it's important to understand that we're doing this um, on the basis of our findings at Suramo alone. But as we do this pivot, we are backed by a gold deposit. Uh, we also hold um, securities in our treasury and we, uh, ooh, it's getting loud, hold securities in our treasury and cash in our treasury as well. So Suramo, you can see the Cadillac brake structure, which Parbex straddles for 1.8 kilometers. Suramo straddles some magnetic occurrences. The main one is 20 kilometers in length, and it was encompassing two areas of historic mineralization, which I staked, Victoria and Colony. The other notable historic mineralization was is Lalonde, and both uh, Victoria and Lalonde were discovered when the hydroelectric power line, which you can see very faintly on this map, was uh, pushed through the area in the 1940s. Um, they saw exploration subsequent to that and most significantly in the 1980s by lack minerals. We have ground proofed. We have determined that there's mineralization at every one of the blue dots, which are the historic polymetallic occurrences. We know of the gold mineralization, the yellow dots, the orange dot in the north is a copper silver discovery we made. Um, but really our focus is between Victoria Colony and what we now call this Victoria structure, which is a 20 kilometer long feature. You can see to the side, and I'm happy to provide this to anyone, and it's on our website, renforthresources.com. You can see some information regarding different findings and mineralization in different locations. Now, we are Suramo's 330 square kilometers. So in order to accurately express to people how big that is, here's Toronto and the GTA with Suramo laid over top of it and the island of Manhattan inserted inside of it. So the 20 kilometer feature we're working on right in the center of the property gives you a good idea just how much ground that covers and just how hard our geologists in the field actually work to um, prospect the largely unexplored Suramo property outside of the historically identified mineralization. So as I mentioned to you, I acquired Suramo by staking. It's 100% owned. And in fact, with the exception of in the area of this small little jut out and a handful of claims, there are no encumbrances anywhere on Suramo. There are no NSRs in place. So it's a very clean property and it's largely virgin ground. We have drilled 5,600 meters um, over 2.2 kilometers of the Victoria structure. We started at the road. We went past the hydro line um, and we found some very interesting uh, polymetallic results. We are outlining what looks like a large scale, low grade nickel sulfide polymetallic system. We currently use the uh, mineralization model of the Utukampu district in Eastern Finland, which is a fairly abstract thing to tell you. However, what it does tell you is there's precedent to the style of mineralization we are currently seeing elsewhere in the world. And it's important to note Utukampu operated for more than a hundred years. Still, the last mine is shutting down now as a polymetallic mining district. So what we are seeing is conceivably operable at some point in the future as a mine. We have an ultra mafic, which gives us nickel cobalt. Um, in, in Maine, those are the ones we're concerned with. And we have a VMS or an MMS, which gives us copper zinc. We're also seeing lead, we're seeing silver, we're seeing platinum and palladium group elements. And actually we're seeing a version of lithium, uh, the version, the, the industrial version of lithium, which would go into uh, hardening glass. So it really is a basket of uh, critical and strategic minerals we're seeing at Suramo. Um, highlighted here are some of our uh, results that we found. And one in particular, we did some drilling um, right before Christmas. We drilled a meter and a half of 3.46% nickel. We know of, we have pentlandite is one of the sulfides we know we have, which is a higher, purer form of nickel. And we clearly drilled through a little bit of it. Um, so this points to potentially as we do more work and we get deeper because we're very shallow in our limited drilling, uh, we fully expect we'll see different amounts and grades of nickel, cobalt, copper, zinc. We, we expect things to change. So right now our current um, hypothesis of large scale, low grade nickel sulfide has every chance of 
increase in grade. This is a detail on the left of our drilling. If you look to the right, you do see highlighted in orange the Victoria structure, which is 20 kilometers in length, give or take. And the blue dot is Victoria. Um, the blue dot is pretty much where the road at the very edge of the uh, picture on the left is. And we drilled 2.2 kilometers into that part of the property. And then there's a more detailed portion of the picture, which is where we stripped 275 meters to expose the surface mineral the mineralized systems on surface. This was interesting because in exposing it on surface, we saw more copper and zinc on surface than we saw in either of the drill holes, drill holes at either end. Um, and in addition, we spent May in the field doing a, a bunch of different sampling targets, which included more prospecting around this portion of Victoria. And we found additional findings and mineralization on surface we see in the drill core. So we created about 200 vertical meters of um, continuity of one of our better grading um, lithologies. So it's very much a, a story in flux, continues to grow. Um, you'll see us continue to work over the summer towards drilling in the fall. And it's quite exciting because this property with road access hydroelectric power located in the province of Quebec, which is pursuing the, uh, the critical and strategic minerals economy and the development of batteries uh, in the province, um, we're very well located. And we're about an hour from uh, Copper, Nick, uh, Copper um smelter at Horn, owned by Glencore, which has been one of the first movers in creating a circular economy for themselves in that they produce metals, but they also recycle batteries um, and they process pulse. So we have a customer not too far away as well, uh, which, is, which is interesting too. Now, the very beginning of our acquisition, we drilled uh, two and a half holes with some equipment which promptly broke down, but the core looked great, and the core is here to show you what visible sulfides in core look like. It's shiny, it's fun, it's exciting, and uh, it tells us that we we uh, we can hit. It makes this property very easy to work, as compared to uh, our Pyrebeck Gold property, because the sulfides are visible in core, which is what allows us to do things like report on our um, prospecting in May, and we told the market we've seen sulfides in on surface or in drill core along this entire 20 meter 20 kilometer trend between victoria west and colony we flew detailed magnetics which are what is shown in this uh, image on the left on the right is the key it shows you where on the property we flew and in conjunction with the magnetics we flew em which would only see maybe at most the first 150 meters but it will tell us if there's sulfides present giving us different categories of uh, anomalies. Our field guys, when they went out to an anomaly and were able to find out crop, found mineralization validating the, um, the methodology. So immediately the property has grown as a result of this survey. In the north, La Lande, which we had previously visited and done some sampling, we sampled um, in this past May and found visible sulfides extending the strike length of Lalone to approximately 2.6 kilometers. And it may in fact mirror to some extent the Victoria structure. Unfortunately, we limited our, uh, our survey and we may have to go back and do some additional geophysics in order to get a better look at the, uh, the rest of Lalone. However, we know we have more than 22 kilometers of mineralized structure on this property. It's quite exciting. The other things we were doing when we went out there, um, we did, as I said, and as we press release, send the guys out with a laundry list of things to explore for on this property. Because as I told you, and you'll see in a later slide, the property is largely virgin ground. Documented pegmatites exist on the margins of the Decel batholith, which is in the southern part of the property. Very prospective area for pegmatites. Pegmatites could carry lithium. Lithium is very much in demand and very exciting. So our guys visited the known pegmatites and they were able to, act, to discover a few unknown pegmatites. All of them have been sampled. We have more than 400 samples pending with the assay laboratory. I expect that'll take a little while to come in. As well, you see pegmatites indicated in the Victoria trend and at Lalonde. There's also, there were rare earth element targets. Um, 
our copper discovery was a target we didn't make it to. Um, but they did do a fair bit of prospecting and they will be back in the field to do more. Um, if we determine we have uh, spodumene, lithium and pegmatites present in the southern portion of the property, we'll have to see what that means um, for Suramo because that would be entirely new. What you can see here is most of the Suramo property and in both gray and red, you see the tracks that our geologists have made on the property. The gray tracks are from prior programs and the red ones, which in some cases overlap the gray, are from the last program. And you can see where there hasn't been work done. And you can see how much more work we will still do or how much ground we will still cover. Parbeck sits on 1.8 kilometers of Cadillac Break. It's adjacent to the Canadian Malartic Mine. It has a uh, May 2020 mineral resource estimate in place, which contemplates an open pit. Subsequent to the mineral resource estimate, which we consider to be out of date, we drilled 15,000 meters, um, which is indicated in uh, red. And we also validated 13,000 meters of historic drilling, which was not included um, in the resource estimate. Those two together total 28,000 meters as against a resource estimate, which um, included 27,000 meters of drilling between 2007 and 19. Um, the interesting thing is we continued the mineralization vertically and we sit on the Cadillac break, which is a deep seated vertical structure. Uh, mineralization runs very deep on the Cadillac break typically, and you're looking for vertical continuity or shoots of mineralization, which occur, um, in cross cutting faults. So the next, uh, 43101 resource calculated at Parbeck would not be calculated, I would venture to say, on the basis of um, an open pit because vertical continuity is the thing we're looking for. With vertical continuity, we see the grades are better and, in, and sometimes the uh, widths are better too. But Parbeck has a very high grade component to the mineralization sitting within a, a, a volume of lower grade material, which is why an open pit can work because we have a lot of low grade material. Canadian Malartic next door went to market with a with a faceplate grade at the beginning of 1.1 grams per ton. Um, our grade is sitting higher than that. And of course, if we take the lower grade ounces out, even the old resource with a sensitivity applied could be a higher grade resource. Um, we do have good grades and we do have significant lengths. And again, Parbeck, anything here that's from the 80s, the 90s, um, or the 20s, 21, is not in the current resource statement. So I would expect that prior to another resource being calculated at Parbeck, we're going to, upon completion, test our new model. Um, we're also working with structural geologists. We require more structural data. These are all steps that start to occur as a deposit matures. Um, we sit with the ability to um, continue, and we are working on Parbeck in the background um, with various consultants. However, Parbeck also does acquire, um, attract attention every once in a while. However, we own it 100%. We, uh, we have no urgency or commitments to maintain. So we do not have to dispose of Parbeck unless uh, the terms are such that we, we like. Um, but we work on Parbeck and we continue to work on Suramo. And you'll see us continue to work on Suramo and Parbeck for the balance of the year. Uh, we do have money in the bank and we sit on, uh, we sit on near cash instruments as well. And ultimately we sit on a couple gold projects, which, um, as they're not no longer the focus of the company may in fact convert into cash at some point, um, in the future, we will, uh, we will focus on our, um, Suramo property. We feel strongly that the, uh, Suramo, um, mineralization, is desperately needed and well worth pursuing in the current macro environment, especially when you consider that the Victoria 20 kilometer trend and the 2.2 kilometers of Lalonde, both Victoria's western portion and Lalonde are sitting at the surface with road access 
and hydroelectric power available for the future. So incredibly well located logistically in Quebec, absolutely secure jurisdiction. Um, this would be the ESG values here are very strong. Um, anything produced from Suramo would definitely be a green product. So Suramo sits right now, Victoria is looking like a large scale, low grade nickel sulfide polymetallic system, but with more work outside of the 2.2 kilometers, so just over 10% of the structure that we've drilled. And with going deeper, we fully expect that the picture at Suramo uh, will change um, in the future. So I think that's basically what I had said that you missed. Um, and I'm still in the conference. I didn't drop the signal again. The skies are cleared. So, uh, you know, all's looking good. Great. Oh, my goodness. Now I see the... Uh, Great, Nicole. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can... Uh, thank you very much, Nicole, uh, for the presentation. Now we'll, let's, let's transition here into the Q&A portion, but let's start off. Uh, with the kind of following up, folks had mentioned that uh, when we dropped off, it was just about when you were talking about the, the lithium prospecting. And, and yeah, well, David, David has weighed in and told me which slide you guys. Yep, right. Slide nine. Could you yeah. could you tell us a bit more about uh, about the the prospecting uh, the targets from this year? What you saw in samples and and including the the lithium prospects on the property. Okay. You okay if I just speak to my screen again? Sure. Are you guys able to, were you able to see my hand, little hand thing floating around the screen when I was sharing the screen or no? Uh, I don't. Just a minute. Think... You don't see my cursor, do you, when I share the screen? Can you see the cursor? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can see the cursor there. Okay, cool. That makes talking about it much easier. So... May prospecting. So the guys went out in May. This is the property map most of it. They had a few, um, as I press release, they had a number of targets um, in May. One was a, there's a documented rare earth thing up here um, that I believe they did a little bit of sampling at. They sampled and extended the Laurent surface mineralization to about 2.4 or 2.7 kilometers, I forget which. In fact, they stepped off seven kilometers from the uh, to the east of Lalonde. Not sure if it's the same trend, but they found mineralization there. They uh, they were able to, to, we've visited the entire 20 kilometers, mostly. There's a hole in the middle. Mineralization all the way along the Victoria structure. And then as we come to the south, they were visiting known map pegmatites to uh, assess the presence of lithium, specifically spodumene and the peg pegmatites. Um, samples have gone for assay and they found a little bit of new pegmatite um, locations. This ground is very flat, very soft, no real outcrop at all. Um, so in order to get better coverage here, we'd probably have to look to doing some sort of prospecting by drone or something first. Uh, so we're going to park that. We're going to wait and see what the assays, when we get them back, which realistically, Last of the assays were submitted early June, and I fully expect it's a minimum two-month turnaround from the lab. So assays are going to continue to trickle in um, over the course of the summer. So we'll see what the lithium values are. We do know we have lithium in the system in the Victoria trend. The lithium we've seen in drilling is associated with um, micas. It's uh, probably lipidil lipidil uh, lipidolite. It's, it would be the lithium that's used in um, formation of glass. And given that we have a polymetallic and we know we can separate all of those elements, can we also separate the lithium? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. The lithium we want for battery metals would be uh, spodumene, and we don't know yet. Uh, we haven't press released um, results for that yet. Um, we did determine that the EM survey we did very good roadmap to mineralization whenever the guys visited one of the uh, the EM anomalies where they could find outcrop they were able they found mineralization um, of course we weren't able to find outcrop everywhere we would like the guys went in with no um, equipment like other than hand tools when they go back in the field they will take uh, will probably take a small 
excavator to do um, very limited, uh, limited mechanical stripping. We're allowed to strip a certain amount, um, which really would just be a case of going to an anomaly and digging a hole and seeing if they can hit bedrock and create um, some exposure. So that, uh, you know, the May results, we, we, we await those. We, we have lithium potential due to this batholith, which is intruding, and pegmatites in Quebec would occur in the margins of the batholith. Um, so if we have that happening, it's going to be happening right around here. Um, so we, we wait to see what the lab has to say. So I think I answered that question. Great. Is that, uh... Absolutely. Um, and looking then at what would you say are would be next priority drill targets uh, emerging from the uh, from the program? Mm. Oh, share my screen again. Easier to speak to it. So this image, Victoria West. There's this is a road, and you do see the power line right there, very faintly goes to the dam to the south. Um, the green dots are our drilling, um, as well as yellow, but you can hardly see that. But all the, we've drilled 2.2 kilometers in from the road. We know the mineralization extends. We know visually, based on our own prospecting just concluded, as well as due to historic information and the fact that we continue to have EM anomalies to the very edge of the property, we know that you know, it's mineralized all the way over. And frankly, we have to start to put some numbers around Surumos in as rapid and responsible a fashion as we can. So our priority is going to be to continue to drill to the West. If my geologist gets his way, his priority is going to be to put the drill right here and then come back to the East. The reason being this end of the, of, uh, the Victoria trend is an interpreted fold. It's also the highest priority, um, you see the red stars, the highest priority uh, EM anomalies are located here with no outcrop. This would be the reason I'll have the guys going out with a small excavator, see if they can create outcrop in the area of the highest value EM anomalies. Um, so this is the high priority part of the property right here. And we would look to have probably this entire six kilometers there's more roads you can see in gray. It's all very accessible. And somebody had asked about the tracks. Well, you see in red and gray, like these are our guys in a car following, you know, they're on a road literally, but the, these are GPS tracks. They're the places we've been in red and gray. So we know we can access the property the entire way across here. It's solid ground. It's not flat. It's not swampy. And there are there is exposure across it. Um, our guys may have found a secondary horizon in their prospecting. We're not sure about that yet. If they did, it means that when we did our drilling in this area, we collared too far to the south. So we have to collar to the north. We have to collar further north and drill to the south again. But uh, more detail will emerge on that as we, uh, as we continue to work on the property. But definitely drilling here come the fall realistically is the is the next the next big step in the interim the guys will be out in the field continuing the prospecting trying to get boots on the ground some of the areas that have never been stepped on on the property literally great and we did have one general question um you know obviously you have uh some good assets here um what what do you think um, and, and it seems like the market's not necessarily giving a lot of uh, value for, for what you have. What, what are some plans you have to help get the word out and, and uh, uh, help uh, kind of people understand what you, what you are sinking your teeth into here? Well, I started working with this company called Red Cloud. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, I communicate every press release that goes out. I put email blasts. I put emails out if you're on my mailing list to explain why the press release is important. I see there's some suggestion that I should put those out perhaps um, when there isn't uh, a press release um, in order to uh, 
just to keep people informed because we do continue to work even if we can't press release it because we're only meant to press release material stuff. Various marketing initiatives, a couple webinars here, a couple panels, uh, probably a little bit of my own Facebook live work, to be honest with you. Um, looking at uh, marketing um, at the end of the summer into the fall, because of course, most marketing in terms of conventions and that takes a bit of a break. But yeah, it's really just getting out there and um, <laughs> getting out there and, um, you know, talking to people. Now, I've been asked a question about valuation on Parbeck. And of course, you can see the re resource estimate. You can't see the impact of our new work but you can play with numbers to your heart's content with regard to ounces and uh, value of ounces in the ground. But I will tell you, I've said no to deals that are 10 million and less. So um, I won't, uh, I won't do a deal on Parbeck less than that number. Um, in terms of the timeline, I've also been asked of, to, de to define what is, what is Suramo. Well, it's a timeline that's going to be measured in years, but I mean, I would expect in the next year, year and a half, we should have our arms pretty firmly around at least the six kilometers of strike we're targeting initially. If not, and probably we'll probably start to work on Lalonde a little bit. There's only 3.7 kilometers between Victoria and Lalonde joined by the road and the power line. Um, so those are very proximal almost to be in mining terms. They're, they're pretty much the same thing from a logistics point of view. So, yeah, I think for the next year, year and a half, given the labs are not going to get any faster, uh, we'll be working on um, we'll be working on Suramo, and I would expect at the end of that we will have forty three one hundred one in place. Uh, I further expect that numbers will start to do their own talking, and people that are paying attention will be doing their own work in the background. So that's uh, you know that's what we're going to be focused on. Great. Um, and thinking long term, kind of a corporate strategy question. Um, if you do find a significant deposit at, at Suramo, would you plan to eventually evolve into a mining company or would you look to partner or, or sell to a producer? Well, I think, I think, I mean, there's so many conceptual ways the future could go. We're, we're going to start to look at what is the cash requirements measured against what is mine personally speaking, or as a CEO, what is our dilution tolerance within the company? Um, I think at some point a partner becomes prudent, partly because they bring intellectual, um, you know, their intellectual assets to bear and their familiarity with, uh, with this type of mineralization. Does that mean that we stay on with a partner and open a mine one day or a partner gets involved and eventually takes us out? I mean, we're we're well down the road then this is pure speculation but i think you, our our goal would be to advance the point to where we can start to see some semblance of valuation to determine what the entrance would look like for a partner and then uh you know maybe we build a mine but if we build a mine it's not me it could be renforth but that doesn't mean it's me so you know that's just the reality Great. And I guess a final question here um, to close things off, just to kind of review what news might we expect to have over the coming weeks and months from Renforth? Um, well, you'll continue to see um, ASSE results as we, as we receive them from our exploration work and ongoing exploration um, at Suramo. Assuming we continue to move um, Forward with Parbeck, you will see us. Uh, you'll see us drill test our new model um, at Parbeck. Um, so really, it's it's continued exploration results between the two assets um, is what you're going to see. Uh, you could see us divest our gold assets. There are various conversations flowing around, but nothing's nothing's press releasable yet, and nothing's to a point where I could even guess. So, um, but it's a possibility. Great. Well, I'd like to thank Nicole Brewster from Renforth again for presenting today. And thank you everyone out there for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back 
Next Monday afternoon, when our webinar series continues with Tempest Resources presenting, Monday, June 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great rest of your day.